Hi, I'm Stefan Gertz from the German Aerospace Center DLR. I'm very thrilled to give a general lecture on behalf of the entire team of the Victoria project at ICAST 2021 in Shanghai. Unfortunately, not in person. This is why I recorded this lecture on the results of DLR's Victoria project. Victoria stands for Virtual Aircraft Technology Integration Platform. But let me first set the stage for Victoria by introducing you to DLR and to our research agenda. DLR is the Federal Republic of Germany's research center for aeronautics and space. By now we have more than 10,000 employees working in 55 institutes and facilities at 30 sites across Germany, as you can see here on the right hand side. I'm located in Braunschweig. We also have international offices around the world. At DLR, we do research in aeronautics, space, transport, energy, security, and digitalization. Today, I will focus on our aeronautics research. Tomorrow's air transfer system will have to be environmentally friendly, safe, quiet, and efficient. That's why doing research on avoiding the emissions of pollutants from aircrafts, for example. We're trying to reduce the noise of aircraft and helicopters. And we also do research and development in terms of unmanned aerial vehicles. And um, more related to our lecture today, uh, we are doing continuous work on the digitalization of aeronautics, all the way from development and certification to production and maintenance. Let me introduce you to our strategy on the digitalization of aeronautics by quickly reviewing the typical or classical way that aircraft are being designed. You start with requirements uh, and specifications, which are used in the conceptual design phase. Then you build a prototype, um, do the maiden flight, um, go into the flight test program all the way to certification. This is then being followed by serious production, where you're actually building the aircraft or the product. Um, and uh, this product then enters uh, service uh, and operations with airlines, for example, and after a long period of operations, um, the product reached the end of its life. This is what I would like to call the physical product domain. Now, um, we can also cast this into the virtual product domain, starting with what we like to call the digital aircraft, helicopter or engine. The digital aircraft is nothing else than a complete description of the physical properties of an aircraft based on high fidelity numerical methods. Based on this digital description, uh, we can do digital aircraft design. And we can also do um, a virtual production um, and testing in the computer of this product. The Word representation of the product with all of its properties and all the models and disciplines will also enable us to collect data for word certification. So then we want to use more and more simulation um, and virtual test methods to complement actual flight testing. The digital twin is more or less a digital picture of the real product in service. At this time, you have actually built um, the first products and delivered them to the customer, um, and you can collect data. And this can be then used to predict the actual behavior and life cycle of the product in flight. This can also be used in terms of virtual operations to predict maintenance intervals. Um, 
including um, yeah, virtual maintenance, repair, and overhaul. All of these elements together is what we call the digital threat. The digital threat ensures digital continuity and availability of all the data and processes um, throughout the entire life cycle of uh, the product. In today's lecture, I will only focus on the digital aircraft, helicopter and engine, because this was the topic of the Victoria project. The virtual product with all of its ingredients is actually the topic of what we call the worship product guiding concept. The worship product is one out of six guiding concepts in aeronautics. The goal of the virtual product is to accelerate the introduction of innovative technologies for more economical, environmentally friendly and safer flying and to better manage technological risks. To achieve this goal, the idea is to virtualize the design, development, and manufacturing processes. Um, so to put all of that into the computer um, based on high fidelity numerical methods and tools. But to increase the trust in these methods and tools, we also pursue um, a dedicated validation strategy, which includes um, flight testing, wind tunnel testing, um, and putting these models um, that we create into the simulators. These um, validated methods and tools um, will lead to a complete digital representation of all the important properties of the product driving the design, manufacturing um, and certification, um, all the way, of course, to virtual operations. Well, if you have this at hand, then this is the key to accelerate the introduction of innovative technologies, because you can access, you can assess these technologies in the computer for the first time, leading to a major reduction uh, in the time uh, to market for these new innovative technologies. You can reduce um, the cost um, um, in the development process. Um, and of course, since you do all of that in the computer, um, uh, based on validated high fidelity physical models, you also reduce the risk of failure. This will lead hopefully to more economical and environmentally friendly products um, and reduce the effort towards certification because you're basically generating a lot of data in um, the workshop product domain uh, and complement the actual flight testing. In terms of the digital twin, um, you're also capturing knowledge. So you're capturing data um, and trying to improve your digital aircraft by feeding back that data. And um, the long-term goal um, of all of these activities is um, simulation-based certification. And as you can imagine, that's a hard task. You see the number of flight points you have to fly in the flight envelope uh, during the flight test program. So you need to rely on yeah, validated procedures um, and validated methods, uh, which have been validated throughout the entire flight and will not, not only at the cruise point. To implement the strategy, we have created three interconnected roadmaps. Um, one is dealing with the digital aircraft. So this is more or less the methods and tools. One is dealing with um, virtual testing and certification and receives its input in terms of methods and tools and aircraft models from the digital aircraft and is feeding back uh, requirements and specifications as well as data to improving the digital aircraft. We do the virtual testing and certification on different use cases and uh, they are the input to the digital twins and the digital threat in terms of actual flying uh, the iStar aircraft, which we have as a flight test aircraft, to then create a digital representation, a digital twin of the iStar. Let me focus um, for a moment on the digital aircraft roadmap. The digital aircraft roadmap includes all the ingredients you need for the virtual product 
including a simulation environment to couple the different disciplines, for example, for elastic computations. It also includes um, a new CFD code, uh, which we started to develop um, more than 10 years ago. It includes the ability to perform gust interaction simulations of the full elastic aircraft, as well as the ability for aerodynamic and aerostructural optimization, both for flow through nacelles as well as powered aircraft. And we also need ingredients such as a detailed geometry description um, and the ability to make reduced order models for the parametrized aircraft, as well as um, movables and spoilers, as well as reduced order models for loads, for computing rapidly the loads for different scenarios throughout the flight envelope, um, which may require uh, machine learning algorithms. To arrive at a multi-fidelity grading-based ability for multi-spinary design optimization, which was part of the Victoria project. We are also carrying on these activities beyond the Victoria project uh, by including uncertainties and design for robust design capability. We are also further pursuing our new CFD code CODA. Um, and improved physical modeling to, in the long run, be able to design flexible aircraft with flight control system and load elevation functionality in a multi-fidelity MDO environment. With the objective to look at novel configurations um, and technologies in terms of, for example, maneuver load or gas load elevation to design virtual engines and virtual cabins, all of that based on validated methods um, which run on HPC clusters to arrive at aircraft design linking all aircraft design MBSE and MDO. We implemented the roadmap in the Victoria project and I would now like to present to you the results on behalf of the entire project team which consisted of more than 160 scientists from 13 different institutes and facilities, which you can see here, who worked on the project for almost four years to address the um, guiding concept of the virtual product. The project included activities, both theoretical, numerical, and experimental, the latter ones being um, conducted in uh, different wind tunnels, uh, in flight, and we also went into DLR's flight test simulators with the goal of arriving at a complete numerical description of aircraft and helicopters and a design capability based on validated high fidelity methods. And we also um, demonstrated for the first time um, virtual flight testing of very detailed aircraft um, at the borders of the flight envelope. The motivation for Victoria was to be able to evaluate the potential of analytic technologies which are being sought after um, and to accelerate um, their introduction into the market uh, with new products. Also, um, to better control the technolog technological risk and to better assess the environmental impact of new products, the idea was to further develop design capabilities based on efficient high fidelity simulation methods, which can be deployed to high performance computers and which are validated by measured um, flight test and wind tunnel data. The, apart from being able to design aircraft, we also wanted to demonstrate that we can go towards um, virtual um, certification by performing virtual flight tests before actually building the aircraft. Today, such testing is typically limited to the um, design point. Uh, so the challenge was to um, raise the potential of such um, simulation capabilities towards the complete flight envelope, including the borders of the flight envelope by improved physical modeling, for example, um, which leads then to realistic um, modeling approaches 
And of course, um, we also need to couple the different disciplines to account for the interdisciplinary effects. The project was also aiming at addressing the special challenges um, which you encounter with respect to rotary wing aircraft, which have very complicated interaction effects, and to implement um, a validation strategy, uh, which is important to convince authorities that we are on our road towards virtual certification. Victoria was a follow-up to the very successful case and digital action projects. We did four steps towards um, digital aircraft design and virtual flight testing based on high fidelity methods. Victoria continues to pursue in that sense um, the long-term goal um, formulated in the virtual product with a focus on flight physics um, and MDA and MDO. The main goal we pursued in Victoria was um, the development of validated methods and tools for the complete numeric description and design of air vehicles based on uh, the one hand advanced materials such as carbon composites, uh, improved physical modeling um, such as improved turbulence models, and a capability for um, multi-story simulation and optimization on high performance computers, including all the relevant physical constraints. In particular, we wanted to collect uh, validation data from both wind tunnel and uh, flight testing to improve our turbulence models for um, a more robust prediction of flows around um, yeah, real complex aircraft configurations um, all the way to the borders of the flight envelope. We also set out to industrialize our next generation CFD code and to go beyond our MDO capabilities in terms of being able to optimize powered, trimmed, flexible aircraft based on high fidelity methods for more than 1000 design variables uh, and including all relevant flight for the constraints, um, a comprehensive set of load cases, all of that um, in less than 10 days um, on a cluster. We also wanted to demonstrate um, virtual flight testing um, used to identify a virtual aircraft model of the Airbus A320, which you can see here, and to use that virtual model to design um, a load elevation system. We also set out to implement a new tool for a multi simulation and optimization of rotors and full helicopters. And we wanted to put the different virtual models of the aircraft and helicopter into our flight test simulator, the Aves. With the project, we um, addressed different challenges in terms of physical modeling of turbulent flows, including, um, yeah, different flow phenomena at the borders of the flight envelope, as well as um, complex flows, which can only be modeled by hybrid RANS LES models. Um, and we also uh, looked at the challenge um, associated with transition prediction. And of course, the numerical robustness of the tools uh, is always an issue for complex configurations. We also address challenges with respect to the high fidelity numerical simulation methods in terms of the robustness, um, efficiency, and uh, accuracy on high performance computers, where the adoption of legacy codes is typically not effective. In terms of MDO, we wanted to study different MDO architectures, which are efficient for finding a global optimum while considering all the interaction constraints for many design firms, which is very difficult. And we also wanted to um, identify the size and load cases using high fidelity, highly accurate methods um, for loads where possible. And to also, for the first time, calculate loads at the borders of the flight envelope with more accurate CFD methods. In terms of 
multisphere simulation, we wanted to include the primary control services and spoilers, which you need, for example, for maneuver load alleviation. Uh, we wanted to improve the robustness of our algorithms, uh, including clever generation of grids, and to also make use of the improved physical modeling for accurate prediction of flow separation. For virtual flight testing, um, the idea was to use system identification and parameter estimation to create the real-time models. And to, um, the challenge was to capture all the relevant characteristics of um, the aircraft um, in a short time, because long simulation times are typically not affordable, um, which you have in real flight tests. And in terms of helicopters, the challenge is um, to com come up with a completely new aeromechanics code for simulating the interactions on the helicopter um, and to add value to existing solutions in terms of usability and expandability. We organized ourselves um, in different work packages. Um, there was one work package dealing with tools, including physical modeling and CFD methods, as well as further developing structural solvers. And then we had work packages in terms of MDO, virtual flight testing, and virtual helicopters. I would like to now show you some of the main achievements uh, in terms of the overall project goals without going into much details. Of course, there was a lot more work being done. In terms of methods and tools, um, work package one, I would like to um, give an update on our next generation CFD code coder, um, which stands for CFD for Onera, DLR, and Airbus. This is really the first common CFD code um, between the three of us. Um, which is based on a prototype CFD code by DLR. Uh, it does include modern algorithms, including higher order schemes and implicit solvers, and is really meant to exploit current and upcoming HPC hardware architectures in terms of the parallelism, for example. We also have um, um, specific CFD specific linear algebra package. It um, lends itself um, from modern software engineering ideas um, and um, has a completely new code design. It's object-oriented um, and can more easily be extended and maintained. And we do um, yeah, modern software engineering in terms of continuous integration and rigorous um, testing and code review. It's a native plugin to our flow simulator environment, which also makes it suitable for multi simulations and optimization. And um, it has new unique features relevant for MDA, including things like um, yeah, mobile overset technologies uh, without and with overlap, um, as well as immersed boundary conditions. Uh, and we're also aiming at rapid CFD capability and automatic differentiation, which is very helpful in gradient optimization. In terms of physical modeling, we um, performed um, a dedicated um, wind tunnel experiment, and you can see some uh, measurements on um, the adverse pressure gradient here using advanced measurement technologies, um, which um, were, and the data was used to determine um, you know, physical laws for separating thermal boundary layers. This led to a derivation of um, an improved thermal model. Um, a Reynolds stress model, uh, which can be used for simulations at the borders of the flight envelope. And you can see here that um, we have much better agreement with this improved model um, with respect to the measured data, as you can see here. For virtual flight testing, we had to first integrate all of the different ingredients which we need including, of course, CFD for aerodynamics, modeling of atmospheric effects like gusts, modeling control surfaces, coupling aerodynamics with um, uh, the unrestrained structure model of the aircraft. Um, we needed flight mechanics in terms of rigid bonnet mechanics, uh, as well, of course, an ability to interpolate loads and deformations. Um, we need um, volume mesh deformation 
uh, the flight control system, uh, trimmability, um, and all of that, of course, on a flexible HPC ready simulation frame. The simulation platform that we employed in Victoria is called Flow Simulator. Flow Simulator is a common development of um, the DLR, Airbus, and Onera, um, and it's an HPC based framework for coupling different um, tools um, or plugins, as we call them, including high fidelity codes such as our CFD codes, Tau Encoder. Um, we can integrate uh, structural solvers, both commercial and in-house solvers. Um, and we can also make use of auxiliary tools such as mesh deformation or plugins for transferring loads and deformations, which are important ingredients together with trim uh, algorithms to enable virtual flight testing. Um, and uh, we also have plugins for surrogate modeling, reduced auto modeling. And together, um, this um, is uh, making up our working horse for multi-spare simulations, analysis, and optimization. As you can see, um, there are different layers um, to Flow Simulator. There's a data layer for a memory exchange of data between the different plugins. Um, there is the actual plugin layer where we have the high fidelity tools um, and plugins as well as the auxiliary tools. And there is a control layer um, in Python to script um, and control complex scenarios and workflows such as virtual flight testing. The design drivers um, um, for the Flow Simulator were um, to make it an open source software framework, at least the FSTM is open source. Um, it's um, highly efficient um, and can be used um, for massively parallel computations and simulations um, uh, involving yeah, a range of different codes and plugins. And it is easy to replace um, plugins, making this um, framework also very flexible. Here's an example of a simulation where we employed some of the ingredients for virtual flight testing. Here we're using our CFT solver Tau to perform RAND simulations of the deployment of the roll spoilers of our research aircraft Airbus A320 ATA. This was a rigid simulation um, using um, an American grid with about 17 million grid points for the half model where these spoilers were deployed uh, between 0 and 40 degrees. Here we see the deflection of the spoilers and the corresponding um, change in the eddy viscosity in the plane behind uh, the row spoilers. We also see the corresponding pressure distribution on the surface of the aircraft. We then use this capability to perform virtual flight tests, um, which were done based on non-flyable uh, virtual uh, flight test maneuvers, uh, which were designed based on wavelet input signals. And these were rather short um, to reduce the simulation time required. And here you can see um, yeah, the dynamics of the maneuver and the reaction of the aircraft in terms of loads and deformations. And here we compare the output of um, yeah, an elastic aircraft simulation with a rigid aircraft simulation, where you can see some differences in terms of the peak loads um, and um, dynamics occurring. We then validated this process chain for virtual flight testing with real flight test data by flying our Airbus A320 ATA. And we recorded the um, control service deflections and played that back um, using the virtual um, flight testing, the virtual flight test model of the aircraft. And here's the comparison of the outputs um, from the simulation with respect to the flight test data in terms of accelerations and rates, uh, seeing that we have a pretty good comparison here. To do so, we um, yeah, put the, this aircraft foil here, as you can see, on the wing. And here's the result of a 2.5, sorry, of a 2G pull-up maneuver. Um, 
yeah, you can see that um, due to the stiffness of the wing, the deflections are not pretty large. However, um, we could measure them very accurately and then compare with our simulations for a 2G steady turn, for example. And here you see um, three different sections cuts. Um, and uh, we show you here the jig shape in black, the simulation um, in blue, and the flight test measurements in red. At the most inward sections, the deflections are very, pretty small. Well, if you go to, to mid-wing, um, we have um, already quite uh, measurable deflections, um, and there's a good agreement between the uh, simulated deflection and the flight test result in red. Um, and that's also true for the most outward um, section. This um, flight test um, was also um, mentioned in the NASA guide for aircraft certification by analysis, which I think is um, yeah, um, showcasing that a validated flight testing capability is very important um, towards virtual aircraft certification. We also um, pursued aeroacoustic simulations of the Airbus A320 and performed um, yeah, high lift noise predictions. As you can see here, we look at the slat noise um, of the complete um, aircraft. And we also validated this non-empirical non predictions with flight test data at specific observer um, positions um, for two different configurations, um, uh, the reference and the low noise and a low noise configuration, and you see pretty good agreement between the noise predictions and the measurements. With these MDA capabilities at hand, we can now do multidisciplinary optimization. What's the goal of um, doing flight physics design uh, based on highly accurate methods, taking the interactions between the disciplines into account? We also achieved um, an MDO of the trimmed thrust controlled elastic Airbus XRF1 subject to flight physics constraints by incorporating all aircraft design constraints, as you can see here, where we varied the aircraft uh, overall configuration. We included flutter constraints using a fast flutter tool. We could balance the loads and moments um, in terms of aerodynamics. Um, we could also compute the required thrust using our engine model. And we also could do loads analysis, both for the open loop and the closed loop aircraft. We also managed to use um, a structure solver that can efficiently provide gradients in the context of gradient-based MDO. And here you can see how the structure model was um, set up um, in Nastran using our own model generator CPEX Mona, which is based on the standard aircraft description format CPEX. And using um, the solution 200 in Nastran, we can then predict um, yeah. structural gradients and cross disciplinary gradients for the global aircraft model. Based on this um, structural model, um, we also build up a full-fledged loads process, taking um, more than 1,000 maneuver load cases into account to find the sizing load cases, um, which are the corner points of what is called the loads posteto. Um, and from, from this, we extracted the so-called SMT loads, which were then used to size the structural model of the aircraft. One goal that we achieved was um, to deploy a highly parallel multi-level MDO platform. We actually looked at three different architectures, a highly integrated error structural wing optimization for a few parameters, um, as well as a multi gradient-based approach where we could also handle um, many constraints and a lot of design parameters. We also looked at a gradient-free approach, um, which is capable of handling many disciplines um, and many parameters in a highly parallel approach, fully exploiting HPC computers. The integrated error structural optimization approach was used for um, a global MDO of a more flexible version of the Airbus XF1 research configuration 
featuring a carbon composite wing and adaptive maneuver load alleviation there, we could demonstrate uh, a combined fuel consumption reduction by 5%. Um, and we could also show that maneuver load alleviation is um, effective. We then performed uh, MDO of the XRF1 um, with more than 1,000 design parameters, including plan form and airflow shapes, uh, and of course, structural thicknesses. All of that on a cluster within 10 days with the many discipline, highly parallel approach. And we managed to do all of that in actually 12 days on more than 1,280 cores. And you can nicely see how the baseline uh, evolved towards the optimal configuration, um, which um, features a significantly larger um, aspect ratio. Um, and you can also, of course, see how the structural model uh, changed accordingly in terms of thicknesses of the wing, skins, bars, and ribs. We also developed a multi-fidelity gradient-based method to, do, to optimize the XRF1 uh, with more than 1,000 design parameters with the uh, objective to improve lift over drag. And uh, we had um, actually managed to include um, more than 500 design parameters, more than 15,000 constraints, um, and 1,000 load cases, and found this um, optimal shape in terms of plan form and airfoils in 72 hours on 144 cool cores, improving lift over drag, uh, at a constant mass, which is not not, un, not unusual when you're trying to balance uh, the interactions between the different disciplines. This gradient-based chain was also used to perform trace studies, um, where we looked at normalized fuel burn um, and uh, empty mass as two objective functions. And by starting from the baseline, we performed um, different uh, optimizations in parallel, uh, efficiently arriving like this um, at a Pareto front in two weeks on a thousand cores. Finally, we also demonstrated for the first time um, the use of high fidelity based um, loads in the MDO. On the one hand, we uh, corrected um, the loads from uh, a vortex lattice method using CFD input and could demonstrate that um, this yeah, improving the loads predictions by high flow CFD does have an impact on the wing mass uh, between uh, 2 and 11 percent uh, reduced mass due to, to proper loads modeling. We also have um, uh, yeah, come up with a reduced order model for air elastic loads, which is based on high fidelity uh, CFD and the idea of synthetic mode shapes to couple the reduced order model with um, the structure model during the optimization. We also um, developed a solver independent tool for structural sizing. As you can see here, um, um, we also could demonstrate that we um, have managed to improve the performance of the tool. Um, for sizing the fuselage of the XRF1 here. We can um, do very detailed models, for example, of the bulkhead here and the tail empennage, um, as well as the integration of the wing and the fuselage. And we could, um, we have validated um, this um, new solvent tool for structural sizing uh, compared to um, Nastron and ANSYS for um, sizing a fuselage bearer. Finally, in terms of virtual helicopters, we are proud to announce that we have a basic version of um, a new comprehensive air mechanics code. Um, and we have demonstrated the free flight um, trim of an overall helicopter. This tool is called VAST for Versatile Air Mechanics Simulation Platform for Helicopters. Also, we um, did MDO of a helicopter rotor considering aerodynamics and aeroacoustics. And here you can see the um, Pareto front um, in terms of the power fraction at cruise um, and the power fraction at hover. And here you can see, for example, the plan from shape of the rotor uh, in terms for, for best cruise um, and all the way to best hover. 
Finally, we have also demonstrated that we have arrived at the capability to perform flight dynamics helicopter simulations with, with the so-called helicopter overall simulation tool HOST, which is an industry standard, all the way from running it on the desktop um, to real-time simulations in the DLR Air Week simulator, um, which is a flight test simulator, Aves. So in summary, um, with Victoria, we pursued um, DLR's digitalization strategy for nautics and the long-term goals formulated in what is called the virtual product. And I think we made significant um, progress um, and a major contribution to the idea of the digital aircraft in terms of improved physical modeling, enhanced numerical and experimental methods. We also verified and validated um, the different numerical methods and design capabilities with dedicated flight tests and wind tunnel tests where appropriate and possible. And um, used this highly accurate validated MDA and MDO capability for um, yeah, designing aircraft and helicopters on high performance computers. And all of that is um, an important step towards the long-term goal of simulation versus certification. In case you're interested, we already had four other presentations on the activities in the DLR Project Victoria here at ICAST 21, uh, including um, the work on our new air mechanics code VAST, as well as the dedicated wind tunnel experiments for improved terms modeling um, and the virtual flight testing activities and the MDO activities. Well, that concludes my talk. Thank you for your interest and thank you for listening. Um, and I'm looking forward to any questions which you may have. And also look forward to meeting you in person uh, at the next possible location. Take care. Goodbye.